sentence is recommended for persons under 15 years. Dessert. Uh, how would you describe it, Doc? Uh, oh, well, I'd describe it as uh, very cold. Of course. That's it in a word. Perfect. Cold. It was so perfectly cold. Thank you. <laughs> what was it? It was green. <laughs> that's right. Did you enjoy it? I don't know. Was it supposed to be green? <laughs> oh, that's all right. Because if it was supposed to be purple, it would have been a flop. <laughs> I must admit, Mrs. B, it certainly tasted green. Yeah, it was a bit lumpy, though. What were the lumps? Oh, don't ask. Me. Listen, mate. I paid for those lumps. This is my house, and I have a perfect right to know what they were. What were they, Phil? Yeah, come on, Mum. Out with the secret. What did we have? You ready for it? Yeah. Yes. Broccoli mousse. Broccoli mousse? Broccoli? Yeah. I hate broccoli. I fought and died in the war to stop my table from being infested with hordes of wog cauliflowers. <laughs> Curly. I don't want curly hair. If I had curly hair, I'd have to drive the theatre around and, and jabber up the steps of, of, of Catholic churches. <laughs> Aussie men have straight hair. Look at Jack Brabham. <laughs> What's Jack Brabham got to do with it? Everything. He had straight hair and he won everything. He drove all those jabbering wogs off the track. Oh, <laughs> rubbish. No, it's true. Every time they saw Jack roaring up in their rear vision mirror, they'd pack it in and go home and have another perm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Well, I must say, Mum, what with broccoli mousse and uh, what was the main course again? I mean, I'll never forget it, but what was it called? Oh, what the Women's Weekly called it or what your father called it? <laughs> no, I remember what Dad called it. <laughs> what was the recipe? Sweet and sour sausage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a change from chops. You're certainly getting brave. <laughs> She's brave. Who had to eat it? <laughs> You ate it all, Ted. You even came back for seconds. I didn't know what it was then. Oh. Come on, Greg, dishes. Oh, why do I always have to do the dishes? Why can't Bruno do oh, them? Oh, Greta, all you've got to do is put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, well, why can't he do that? Greta, there are some machines that are for women and some that are for men. And you don't see me starting the victor until Ted's given up trying. <laughs> and you never see a man using a dishwasher. Oh, rubbish, Mum. It's true, Greed. The Hoover warranty itself says this machine will get confused if operated by a man of the male gender. Besides, it's mine. Come Mom. on. I wanted to watch television. No, nobody watches television. There's enough of this fun running around this house. We're going to have less of this happiness, Glomp. We're going to play a game. Oh, not snap again. No, no. <laughs> not pin the tail on the donkey. No, no, it's something I've invented. Pin the bum on the grumble. <laughs> Watch it, Wob. This is going to be the new game craze that is going to sweep the nation. Well, what's all that? It looks like a miniature wall. Yeah, it is. Oh, you're going to have more fun with this than you've ever had with anything else in your life. More fun <laughs> than you'd have if you edged up behind that horrible nun at the school crossing and blew your horn. <laughs> what's it all about? It's about the Second World War and how I won it. How do you play it? Well, it's like Monopoly. Except you have guns and bombs. And everybody has an army and you throw the dice to see who wins the battle. And, and eventually the war. You, know, you might just have something here, Ted. Yeah, oh, of course I have, boy. I'm going to be so rich, I'm going to be able to hire someone to go to the dunny for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. What's it called? Uh, you ready for it? Yeah. Blow up. Blow up what? The world, everything. Blow up. The violent war game for children of all ages, invented by Sergeant Ted Bulpit, catering corps retired. 
inventor of the cocky result. <laughs> Say, Grace, it was easy. Oh, gee, that Mr. Hoover must have been clever. I mean, fancy designing a washing machine and running the FBI at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, not blow up, Dad. Can't you just let it rest in peace? Shut up. You're going to enjoy this war whether you like it or not. <laughs> you played this before? I've been playing it since I was five. Every year, Dad drags it out and sends it off to John Sands with a note saying, it's going to be bigger than Monopoly. And every year, they send it back with a note saying, and sends it off to John Sands with a note saying, it's going to be bigger than Monopoly, and every year they send it back with a note saying, no, it's not. Quiet. Now get your armies ready and stand by for blowing up and laughing. At last, a legal way to knock you off. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> you were dying to see me dead, aren't you? So you can get your greasy fish shop fingers in my house. Well, you're not going to, because I'm going to leave my house to the only person I can trust. Me, kid? No, Neville. Neville. <laughs> Well, at least he's all Australian, not some grunty little reject from Grasby land. I don't want your bloody house. You do so, do so there. I'd hardly be cold in me grave before you and your purple family would be splashing cement render all over the place. <laughs> and planting rows of columns in the driveway. What about me? Oh, calm down, Mum. They won't cement render you. <laughs> all I know, Grief, is when I go, I want this house to go to a nice home. Yes, Mum. <laughs> Dear, why are Bruno's relatives going to cement render the house? They can't control themselves, Phil. They're wogs. They cement render everything. <laughs> I mean, here's Rock was an outside dunny before the Bertolucci mob got it. <laughs> well, that's right. We had to enlarge it because someone said you were coming to visit. <laughs> Dad, Bruno, stop it. Well, I didn't start anything. He did. I didn't. He did. Didn't. Did. 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 did, 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 did. Stop shouting at me, I'm your father. I'm going to tell on you for that film as she's shouting at me. <laughs> All this fighting and arguing, it's ridiculous. And how can you expect to win a war if you're constantly fighting? <laughs> Why do we have to play this dumb old war game? Listen, girl, you'll be smiling on the other side of your nose when John Sands looks at these wonderful refinements I've made and, and, and snaps it up for a cool million bucks. Let's face it, Ted. The only money you're ever going to get from John Sands is Monopoly money. Isn't it obvious, Dad? The bull pits are doomed to poverty. You are never going to be a millionaire. I am, I am. I was born to have lots of money. It's just that the world's plotting against me and it stops me from being rich. I hate being poor. Gives me headaches. Ted, <laughs> we are not poor. And the only headache you had was when Bob put concrete in your school cap. <laughs> Who's Who's Auntie Vi? Auntie Vi. Auntie Vi Lapool, my aunt. She's rich. Huh. I've never met her. Oh, yes, you have, Ted. She came to our wedding reception. You wouldn't let her in because she didn't bring any grog. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember her. She was the only one of your female relations with straight legs. Oh, well, tell me about her. Well, after her first marriage ended so tragically with the cattle stampede, she went to Hong Kong to cheer herself up. And? It worked. She married a millionaire, the man who invented waterproof thongs. <laughs> waterproof thongs, of course. Write your own check. I'd have thought of that first if you hadn't pinched my idea. Oh. Anyway, that marriage ended very tragically too one day. He was testing out his racing thongs, he had a high-speed rickshaw accident. <laughs> Poor Auntie Vi. Never been the same since. Why? Well, she just travels the world because she's so rich. Pops in unexpectedly on relations. Well, she never dropped in here. Well, you never know, Ted. Only last week she called in on the poolies in Melbourne. You know, that family whose girls swam in the Olympics. Of course, the swimming poolies. <laughs> Very funny. Very smarty poo. 
<laughs> I'd have said that if I thought of it first. Stop pinching my jokes. Oh. Well, you know what I mean, and if you don't, I do. So there. Mm. <laughs> what was Miss Auntie Vi like? Oh, she's a lovely lady. But when she was young, she was so pretty. She used to be an Avon lady, you know. And apparently, even though she's got more money than Mark Walsh put together, <laughs> you always know when it's Auntie Vi at the door, because she goes, ding dong. Avon calling. Silly old truck. Now, are we going to get this game going or not? Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Now, you're the Japs, and you, Miss Camel Nose, you're the Germans, and you felt because you'll be running out into the kitchen, you're the Italians. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, I'm the goodies, the Allies, mate. Why? Ah, because we won. We're going to win again. Right. Stand by. Ah, there they are. Right. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Open new orders from Field Marshal Montgomery. Are you watching what? Yeah. I take the top card from the Allied Command Order heap and I do as it instructs. What's it say? Surrender immediately. We have lost the war. <laughs> Is having a sale. I got two haircuts for the price of one. The only everyone I know that has hair that short is that sad family in Melbourne. Who? The Sullivans. <laughs> Do you know, Dave's hair has grown an inch since Grace got blown up in London. <laughs> Mum, Grace Sullivan didn't really get blown up in London. Yes, she did, Craig. No. I was in that very lounge room when Dave got the telegram. He read it to me and he got so upset they had to put in a commercial break till he pulled himself together. Yes, ma'am. Only thing you know, Craig, every son of them that goes to London dies there. Why can't they die in Melbourne like everyone else? <laughs> Mum, they're only actors. I mean, no one really dies in Melbourne. Why not? They all go to the Gold Coast to do it. Oh, Weston, they're sure of a lovely day for it, aren't they? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. B, Craig. Hi. Oh, hello, Bruno. To what do we owe the pleasure of this cooey? <laughs> well, last night, Greg and I were talking. Oh, it's a good sign. <laughs> anyway, we were talking about Grumblebum and his money problems. Hey, what's oh. that on about now? Oh, your father's in one of his get-rich moods. Oh, no, not again. Yes, ever since I mentioned Auntie Vine, a Hong Kong song billionaire, he's been driving us mad with get-rich-quick schemes. Oh. Well, anyway, I think we've got the answer to our problem and it'll teach Ted a lesson. Doesn't involve hurting him? No. Oh, come on, just a little oh, bit. Hey. <laughs> no, go on. Well, actually, it's Greg's idea. You know how she's having these acting lessons? Oh, yes, a drama society thing. Right. So we... I think... know what you're thinking. Yeah? Oh, oh, I think it's mischievous, devious and downright sneaky. Oh. So let's do it. <laughs> Grandmother, give a man a heart attack. What do you want? Do you live here? Uh, what? Do you live here, do you? No, no, I'm waiting for a bus. Is this your house? Uh, no, no, this is the MCG, and my name is Don Bradman. And if you're looking for Dennis Lilly, he's over at John Newcomb's house returning a moustache he borrowed. <laughs> Have you escaped from somewhere? I bet you're wondering what I want. Yeah, I am a bit. Well, go on, ask me. Say... Pardon me, mysterious dark visitor with blonde hair. What do you want? Listen, you. Go on, say it. Stop poking me. Go on, ask me what I want. Look, I'll thump you in a minute. Go on, ask me, <laughs> ask me, ask me. All right. What do you want? Not telling. <laughs> Listen. You have to guess who I am first. Listen, if you don't stop poking me, I don't want to guess. Go on, guess. Look, I'll flatten you in a minute. All right, I'll guess for you. Uh, am I, uh... A killer the Hun. What? Am I a killer the Hun? I don't know. I've never met a killer the Hun. Where does he work? Oh, dear, your doubt. I'll make it easier for you. Am now, I... listen, you. Don't interrupt the question. Am I Sir Jane Sutherland? 
Alan. Of course not. Look, you've got... You've been chased by men in white suits. Uh, have another question. Go on. Am I Balak? No. Will you stop the, fucking me? The Harlem Globetrotters. Am I the Harlem no. Globetrotters? All right. You win. I give up. Who am I? I don't know, but get out of my house. All right. I'll give you a clue. You're really going to be surprised. Now, watch and listen. Here's the clue. Avon calling. Pickle me, grandmother. It's an Avon lady. <laughs> Hide everything. Lock away your money. It's a wild Avon lady stalking the neighbourhood. What was all the noise? It's all right. I've got everything under control now, Phil. It was a huge 17-stone salesman with a gun in one hand and a tattoo in the other. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks to my unarmed combat training, I flattened him and threw him out. It sounded like a woman. Well, yeah, it was actually a, a woman, but she was huge and dangerous, and she, she had a flick knife. She sounded very small. Oh, well, she had a, a, a pointed finger. Now, can I read Mandrake in peace, or do I have to go out to the Commodore to do it? Oh, sorry, Tim. Should think so. D don't answer it. Don't answer it, Phil. Uh, it'll be that loony woman. Now, let's, uh, let's pretend we're on a cruise and hide behind the couch. Oh. <laughs> you hate cruises. They make you seasick. All right, we're throwing streamers over the wharf, but hide. Oh. Oh. No, don't answer it. Don't answer it. Oh, Ted, it's very rude not to answer a door when it's calling. Well, <laughs> could be the man from Lotto. I'll bet you it's not. Why not? We do the fools. <laughs> no, don't answer it. No, we'll be drowned in topaz. I have got to get it. Ding dong, Avon calling. Oh, come in. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, good afternoon to you. Come in, Ted. It's an Avon lady. An antique one. <laughs> it will be grandmother, another one. They got the place surrounded. And what would be your name, young fella, my lad? Rackoff. Oh, <laughs> the composer. You're the Rackoff who wrote Rackoff's Piano Concerto. Oh, God, it's another one. They're mad people tarry hooting all over the place. Look, we don't want any perfume. Now get off my property or I'll call the cops. I like your spirit, boy. Here. Have a pair of thongs. They're waterproof, you know. <laughs> Listen, Grandma Chookface, or whatever your name is, I, I hate you. Hate, hate, vomit. <laughs> as far as these waterproof thongs are concerned, you can take them and you can... You can... <laughs> Auntie Vi, I love you. Why are you what you need? Because I'm poor. Is he always like this? Get up, Ted. <laughs> he gets very emotional about family, you know. Oh, 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 yes, of course. That's why you had me thrown out of your wedding reception. A uh, mistake, an honest mistake. I thought you were someone else. Who? My mother. <laughs> well, how are you, Thelma? Oh, you know, still married to Ted. Oh, well, never mind. Have a pair of thongs. Oh, thank you. Oh, Oh, look, I'll get it, Phil. Uh, you take Auntie Vi down and make her comfortable. Put her in my chair, oh, right. where she can stretch her purse out and, and, and be nice and comfortable. Oh, right. Yes! Ding dong, Avon calling. Pick on me, Grandma! You again! Who is it, Ted? It's the Harlem Globetrotters again, Phil. Now listen to me. Are you or are you not Mr. Edward Melba Bullpit? He's moved. Where to? Uh, flat 28, Acropolis Towers, uh, Alamein Street, just half a mile down the road. Now, rack off. Flat 28 Acropolis Towers is Greek and Bruno's address. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good day, Dad. I uh, oh, just oh, came over to pick him up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Can't you see there's a rich old lady there trying to have a sleep? Oh, is this Auntie Vi? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. I wonder if she's going to leave me any money in her will. Now, you get away. She's mine. I found her first. <laughs> but she's my great aunt as well. No, she's not. She hates you. She didn't say that. Well, she didn't say it, but I heard a dream a minute ago. Rubbish. No, no, no. Look, you, 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 I, she loves me. You know, you get your own rich aunt. Uh, now, now, go and find that glad bag and get your glad rags in it and go and find that Wendy girl of yours. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Gee, she doesn't look too well, Dad. What do you mean? Well, as a doctor, I'd say she hasn't got long to go. Oh, but she can't. She hasn't left me everything yet. Well, uh, oh, God, I, I can't be sure. I mean, I haven't had time to do a full examination yet, but if I did, a sure sign would be an involuntary twitch of the right hand. The right hand? <laughs> <laughs> the 
whole arm went. Had to follow a hand. Well, uh, how, how long do you think she's got? Oh, I don't know. Five, maybe ten minutes. <gasps> I'll see you then. I call me grandmother. She hasn't done a will. Uh, uh, Auntie Vi. Auntie Vi. Hey, what? Of course uh, I'm rich. I've got a two rickshaw garage. Uh, wake up, Auntie Vi, wake up. Oh, oh Teddy, uh, I must have. Off. Yeah, I thought we'd just have a little chat. No, chat away, Teddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Addy boy, uh, what will you do today? What do you mean? Well, what will you do during the next five or ten minutes? <laughs> Why, is it important? Is it what? Uh, Addy boy, I, I thought I might dash off a will this afternoon, and I thought perhaps we might... Oh, sorry. ...dash off a will together. <laughs> and then the more wills, the merrier. Oh, <laughs> I've already got one. You have? Oh, uh, uh, where, where would it be? Here? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've been carrying it around for years. Oh. 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 <gasps> Pickle me grandmother, you've left everything to me. I'm rich. Well, oh. I haven't signed it yet. You haven't signed it? No, suppose I should. Oh, really. bloody hope you should. Uh, 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 no, I'll get it, I'll get a pen. Oh, dear. Pen, a pen. There's got to be a pen here somewhere. Bloody Thelma, where she left the pen? Oh, please, God, let there be a pen here. Oh, I think so, Teddy. I think I'll just slip off into the lake. No, 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 no. Stay awake, stay awake, Auntie Vi, stay awake. Oh, no, going, Teddy. No, 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 you've got to stay awake. Let's sing a loud song together. Be kind to our web-footed friends, for a duck may be somebody's mother. Oh, thank God. Be kind to your friends in the swamp. Where the climate is rather damp. Now, Roy, here's the pen. Hey? Eh? Oh, no. Here, here. Sign it, sign it. Oh, sign the will. Twitch seems to be getting out of hand. Like a... Take the bloody pen. That's right. Oh, God. Wait, sign it. What's going on? Oh, shut up. I'm rich. If she'll only sign it. Sign it. G'day, Ted. What's okay. happening? Get away from me. It's all mine. Oh, sign it, sign it. Hello, Please. Dad. It's me. Oh, God. Uh, who are you? I'm your Auntie Vi, Ted. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure you are. Oh, quick, sign it, sign it. You've only got 30 seconds left. Sign it. Auntie Vi? Your Auntie Vi? That's right. Are you sure? Yes, Ted. Well, if, if you're... Uh, who's she? Hello, Dad. I'll be proud of you. So, you see, Ted was just our tricky way of teaching you a lesson about how money isn't everything. You reckon, do you? Ted. All right, it's not. But it's so humiliating. Auntie Vi must think I'm an absolute fool. Yes, I do. <laughs> Mind you, I've always thought that. But it'll make you feel any better, Ted. I've got another surprise for you. What? I'm broke. What about the Hong Kong Thong millionaire? I was just his cook. Thelma, I must give you my recipe for sweet and sour sausage rolls. Bloody women! <laughs>